In this problem, we're towing a cart with a block on top of it, and the cart has a mass, and the block has a mass, and a uniform density. And we are asked to find what is the maximum force we can apply to this cart before um, the whole block starts to tip. Okay, so we're going to start with our free body diagram, as always. And in this case, we're going to have two free body diagrams, one for the cart and one for the block. Again, because we have to analyze these uh, separately. So we're going to start with the um, cart free body diagram. So our cart, and so cart is going to include the block on top of it. So this is our block, and everything is attached together, and then we have our two wheels over here. So the forces on this free body diagram are as follows. We have a force that is pulling the cart in that direction. We have a force due to gravity, uh, Fg of A. Sorry, let me write that better. That's the force of gravity due to the cart. And then we have a force of gravity uh, due to the luggage. And then we have a force of gravity due to the cart, Fg of the cart. And then we have two normal forces. N1 and N2, okay? Um, and then lastly, we have an acceleration of the cart and um, the block, um, and we're gonna call this A. And um, again, we're gonna specify a coordinate system. So our coordinate system is positive X to the right, positive Y up, and moments are positive counterclockwise, okay? So this is our free body diagram of uh, the whole system together, cart and block, and you'll see why we need that. We need this later. Um, and then we can do a second free body diagram of just the block. And so the block is going to have, again, the same uh, force due to gravity, FGA. Um, and it's going to have a normal force along with a friction force on the bottom. Okay. Now, it's really important that we determine the location of this normal and friction force. Uh, so in the question, we're given that we need to find the force here right before this whole block here starts tipping. Okay, so if it if everything was resting, uh, I'm going to draw this in green, um, the, if there was no force F, uh, we'd have a gravitational force, FGA, that's balanced, that is balanced by a normal force, N, right? And this normal force would be right uh, aligned with the center here. But as this block accelerates, um, the normal force actually starts moving backwards. So if the acceleration is uh, in that direction, A, then we get that this normal force here will start moving um, backwards in that direction. And it moves further and further back until we get to this point here. And this is the uh, right at the edge of the block. Okay. Once the normal force moves to that edge there, um, that's the point where if it moves further, um, the whole block is going to start to rotate. So it's going to uh, create an omega and an alpha in that direction. Okay, and the whole block is going to start tipping backwards. Um, so again, um, to impose this um, condition of tipping, so just before tipping, we need to apply the normal force right at the edge of that block. Okay, and again, with a normal force comes a friction force. Uh, and so the friction force, um, I'll draw this one in purple, um, will be um, in this direction. Um, and there's always a friction force, um, again, countering this acceleration here. 
Um, but in this problem, we're not given any information about the friction coefficient. We're just given that it's going to start tipping before sliding. Okay, but you'll see why we don't need the friction coefficient. Um, but back to our free body diagram, we're going to add our force, um, our normal force, right at the edge of this block. Um, and so this is going to be on the normal force at A. And then we have our friction force um, F of F uh, of A. Okay. Um, and then lastly, we're going we're gonna to add our uh, kinetic diagram portion, which is an acceleration at the center of gravity, um, A. And this is the same acceleration as the whole cart, right? Because there is no relative motion between the two, there's no sliding, um, they're going to have the same acceleration. Okay, so these are our two free body diagrams. Um, and we're, I'm going to add uh, some naming conventions So this point here. Or we're going to call O, um, and you'll see why we need that later. Okay, and this is block A, and this is the cart. This is A, and O is right there. Okay, now that we have our free body diagrams, we can start with our force balances. So in this case, what we're trying to solve is for the force F. Okay, um, and our unknowns are, well, the two normal forces. Um, and acceleration along with F, okay? But you'll see why we don't need to solve for all of these, and then also the friction force and the this normal force. We don't need to solve for these in, in detail. We just need to solve for a few equations that really simplify our problem, okay? Um, so let's start with the cart. So in the cart, again, we, we can do all our three equations, but we can intuitively think and reason why we don't need to take all of the sum of forces. Okay, so if we take the sum of forces in x, um, we're going to relate f with a. And we need that. We need to relate f with a. Okay, so that's why we are going to take a sum of forces, a sum of force in x um, for the cart. So let's do that over here. Sum of forces in the x direction is equal to m a, um, and um, let's implement this. So the sum of forces in the x direction, we just have f, um, and f is going to be in the uh, negative x direction because we define this to be x, this to be y, and this to be a positive rotation. Um, so we're going to have negative f is equal to uh, m, and m here is the whole mass of the whole system, okay? Again, in this free body diagram, we only include external forces. So this, these internal forces, they're canceled because um, they're opposite in, um, they're opposite in magnitude, in direction, and same in magnitude on the cart compared to the block, so they cancel out. This is only external forces, but we have two masses here. Okay, so we have to add both the mass of the cart and the mass of the block. So m of a plus uh, m of the cart. And this is going to be times the acceleration a, which we said was just going to be an x because it's right before it starts tipping. So no vertical accelerations. Okay, um, so when we solve for this, uh, we try and solve for this, but we see that we have two unknowns, right? f and a. We don't know them. Uh, so this equation is useful because it relates f and a, but we can't solve for anything yet. Now let's try and do a force balance in the y direction, and we can see that this doesn't yield us any useful information. Uh, because if we sum up the forces in y, there's these four forces, one, two, three, four, and um, we're adding uh, two unknowns that we don't need to solve for and it's not relating any of, any of the other unknowns that we actually need to solve for. So a sum of forces in y does not yield any useful information for us. It would if we had to solve for n1 and n2, okay? And then if we do a sum of torques, um, again, this doesn't yield any information, and we also cannot do this because we're not given any of these distances here between the wheels. Um, so since we're not given the geometry, that there's no information to relate those forces. Okay, so sum of moments for the cart is not useful for us. So we conclude that for the cart, the only useful equation is the sum of forces in the x direction. So now we need more equations. That's why we're going to look at the block. 
Now, if we look at the block, again, we can do a sum of forces in the x direction. Okay, so let me draw in the x direction is this way, uh, y direction is that way, and rotation is positive counterclockwise. If we do a sum of forces in the x direction, we're going to relate the force of friction with acceleration solely. Okay, and since we don't need to solve for the force of friction, we don't need this equation. Let's do a sum of forces in the y. If we do that, we are going to relate the gravitational force on the block to the normal force. And since we're not solving for normal force at A, we also do not need this equation. So the last one is the sum of moments. And if we do a sum of moments, um, we are going to pick a point. We're going to relate this force with the acceleration, which is what we need. Um, so we have two equations relating force and acceleration, which gives us the which we can solve to equations two unknowns. So let's do that. So for the block, we're going to do a sum of moments. And it's really important that we pick the right location to do the sum of moments about. Because if we pick a random point, say here, um, we would not get the number of equations and unknowns that we're going to, uh, we can solve the problem with. Okay? If we pick O though, that's going to cancel our normal force and our force of friction because they go straight through that point. No moment arm, no torque. Okay? Um, and so if we pick O, we just have an equation relating A and FGA, which is what we need. Okay? Um, and so that's why um, we need um, we need to take a moment about O. And this is a smart choice. You could also take a moment about anywhere else around the block, but then you would have to take a sum of force in the X and a sum of force in the Y um, to relate everything and get back to the original um, to the problem. And you would solve four equations for unknowns instead of two equations to unknowns. And again, this sum of moments here is going to be equal um, to M A uh, times D. Okay, and because remember, when we take the sum of moments by about a point that is not the center of mass, center of gravity of the block, we need to include this term that arises from the acceleration. Okay, and this is the moment arm that the acceleration makes with the point that we're looking to do the sum of moments about. So we can do this, and um, this is what we get. Um, M G times width of A divided by 2, and this is because this uh, moment arm is going to be half of this distance, um, and Ng is FGA, um, just rewritten, um, is equal to MA times HA over 2. Again, this distance D here is going to be half of the height. Okay, so that's why we have HA over 2. Okay, and this is a simple equation that we can um, directly, where we can directly solve for A, um, the acceleration. Um, and again, this here, the way we implemented the tipping condition is by applying these normal forces and friction forces right at the edge of the block. Okay, so we're not implementing any other conditions because by applying those forces there, we're assuming that we're, we have, we're just before tipping. Okay, so we can plug values in. So we have um, 50 kilograms uh, times 9.81 meters per second squared uh, times uh, 0 0.5 meters over 2 is going to be equal to um, 50 kilograms uh, times A uh, times 0 0.8 meters over 2. Okay, and if we solve for A, we get that A is equal to um, 6.131 meters per second squared. This is not our final answer, though. We're not asked to find A, we're actually asked to find F. But since we have A, then we can plug it into this equation to solve for F. Okay, so we go back to the sum of forces and we plug in um, A. So we have uh, 50 kilograms plus uh, 12 kilograms 
um, times 6.131 meters per second squared is going to be equal to um, 380.14 um, newtons. And this is going to be equal to R force F. Okay, and we get a negative because um, it's in the negative x direction. So F is equal to negative 380.14 newtons in the x hat, in the i hat direction. Um, and this is our final answer.